Welcome to worship here this morning. This is our prelude. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like the eagles. They shall run and not be Good morning and welcome to worship here at Trinity Lutheran Church in Watertown, Minnesota. This is our prelude for today. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like the eagles. They shall Good morning and welcome to worship today at Trinity. This is our prelude as we gather for worship. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like the eagles. They shall run. all learning to wait these days, aren't we? For whatever comes, whatever God brings to us. Good day and welcome to worship here at Trinity Lutheran Church in Watertown, Minnesota. Grateful to be here with you. My name is Pastor Jeff Engholm. Grateful to be here worshiping with you. Also grateful that our intern, Jacob Euland, is here helping lead worship. And also glad that Robin Behrens is behind the scenes making all of this happen. Glad that you're here as well. Feel free to check in uh, below, if you'd like there, make a comment there or push one of those buttons if you're watching us on Facebook. And if you're watching us on some other way, well, let us know that you're doing that as well. If you'd like a bulletin for this morning's service, you can find that at our website, trend.org. And then just scroll down to our online worship and you can find the bulletin for today's service to help you um, move along with us. But you don't have to have the bulletin. Jacob and I are glad to lead you through this here and we'll bring everything you need. The songs, the prayers, the readings as we gather together for worship. We continue through our summer series about God's river of life. Remembering how God's waters have always nourished the earth and how that continues to come to us all. Today we're looking at the waters of the Jordan River and the baptism of Jesus. Now Jesus was baptized, dunked down into that river, and then he was raised up in his a start for ministry, kind of like that prelude we just sang about waiting for the Lord to be raised up, mounting on eagles' wings. Jesus was baptized and came up out of that water to new life, just like our baptisms as well. So, it is good to be together. I'm grateful we're not here in this physical space as we're used to before, but now we're getting more and more used to being here in this way, and it's okay. In fact, I'm very grateful it's more than okay to be here and to be together now in this way as we celebrate the baptism of Jesus and our baptism as well. Baptized in water, sealed by the Spirit, cleansed by the blood of Christ our King, heirs of salvation, trusting God's promise, 
Gracious Lord, you have promised that rivers of living water will flow from a believer's heart. Fill us with your water of life, O Lord, so that we might overflow with peace, hope, love, and joy. In your name we pray. Amen. Our litany this morning comes from Isaiah 35. I will invite you to respond with, let the river flow. On that day the desert will be glad, the wilderness will rejoice and blossom. Let the river flow. Like the flower, it will burst into bloom. It will rejoice and shout for joy. Let the river flow. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong and do not fear. Let the river flow. The burning sand will become a pool. The thirsty ground will become bubbling springs. Let the river flow. And a highway will be there called the way of holiness. It will be for those who walk on that way. Let the river flow. Gladness and joy will overtake them, and sorrow and sighing will flee away. Let the river flow. Indeed, let the river flow. Let the poor ones say, I am rich again. Let the lost ones say, I am found again. Let the river flow Let the blind ones say I can see again Let the dead ones say I am born again Let the river flow Let the river time for now it's time for our children's moment kids gather around sure get on up close here yeah come on in moms and dads other adults there feel free to get another cup of coffee if you want or you're welcome to stick around because well the message is for everybody here today because you know what we continue to move through this time of the COVID that's what I call it the time of the COVID, when things are just kind of topsy-turvy and all the normal things that we used to do, we're still kind of doing them, but it's all different and who knows what's coming up with school and the fall. We just don't know. And even decisions that are made, they might get changed. We got to have both plan A and plan B and plan C around, right? As we make plans. And so it's hard, but, but it's not all hard. I mean, there are some interesting fascinating, even good things 
coming out of all of this, right? I saw it on Facebook just a couple days ago. One of our members, she was telling her daughter it was just time to get off the computer. And, you know, computer's fine, but she'd just been on it a lot. Just find something else to do. And so she did. So she found some clay, and Stella made these little, tiny, beautiful, clay, little animals. Little things there that, that she made. It was, it was gorgeous. Probably never would have done anything creative like that under other circumstances in a different time and yet she did she made these this beautiful thing out of it something rose up out of her like is rising up out of all of us these days it feels like everything's dying and yet there's new life rising here hang on let me take this clip off here so i can hang on to it here it's like this like this balloon this is us we're baptized into Christ, which means we're down, but then we're lifted up and we rise. And look at that balloon. Oh, there it goes. It's just like that. Christ's Spirit in us makes us kind of glow even when things are dark. Gives us a smile. Yeah, not all the time. Life isn't perfect. But then we can rise. Uh, I don't know, just going to hang on to that. We're going to rise like this so that we can look at that. It's going up. It's going up so that we can rise there with that, and there it's going. What? I. Somebody might want to call the property committee a little bit, talk to me about that. But no matter. The point is, we rise just like that balloon, right? Well, the sky's the limit. God's Spirit is in us, lifting us up out of the darkness. We rise with Christ every single day because God's river of life is flowing through us. Well, let's sing this song. You remember the chorus, just like that balloon. Spring up, oh well. Yep, jump up when we get to that part. Spring up, oh well, within my soul. Spring up, oh well, and make me whole. Spring up, oh well, give to me that life abundantly. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. Opens prison doors, sets the captives free. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Spring up, oh well, within my soul. Spring up, oh well, and make me whole. Oh, oh, spring up, oh well, and give to me that life. That last part again, spring up, oh well, within my soul, spring up, oh well, and make me whole, spring up, oh well, and give to me that life abundantly. The reading this morning comes from Matthew chapter 3, verse 13 through 17. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so for now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill righteousness. Then he consented, and when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Here ends the reading. Grace and peace to you from God Almighty, the one who was buried in death, was raised to new life, and who now raises us to new life every single day. Amen. Well, all summer long, we've been looking at God's river of life, active in creation since the very beginning. In fact, yeah, at first, in the very beginning, in the book of Genesis, God's Spirit was hovering over those massive waters. And then, when Noah came along later, there was a massive flood 
that covered all of creation. And then later, when Moses led the people out of Egypt in the most important event in the Old Testament, in the Exodus, God's people walked on dry land and right through the massive waters of the Red Sea. So far, all of our stories have been mostly about God's massive, great, big, living, mighty waters. Even in Amos, as we heard last week, about God's righteousness flowing like an ever-rolling stream. But now, today, all that big water talk is being funneled into just one forceful stream. You know, like that shot of water comes out of the garden hose when you put your thumb over the end of it. Ever done that as a kid? Yeah, you put that on there and the water sprays out. Because today, we're going to look at the force of Jesus, that one person who from the very start of his ministry used water as a way to bring new life to all of God's people. Like today, when Jesus is baptized in the Jordan River, in the waters of that river, when Jesus began his public ministry, it was important for him to connect with the people he was going to lead. And since they were all being baptized by John out in the wilderness, Jesus was baptized too. Before he began preaching, before he began teaching, before he began reaching and healing and helping people, Jesus was launched into his ministry by the Spirit of God. You know the story. It goes like this. And when Jesus was baptized in the river, he came up out of the water, and the Holy Spirit descended on him like a dove. And a voice from heaven was heard, saying, This is my Son, my child, my beloved. Up until now, Jesus had merely been preparing for ministry. Born in a stable in Bethlehem, raised by Mary and Joseph in Nazareth, working with his father as a carpenter. That was his history from the past. But now his future would be something different. Sure, he would always be the son of Mary and Joseph, but in his baptism, he would be named something else. Jesus, child of God, beloved. He wasn't just getting ready for his ministry as a child of his parents. Jesus was getting a whole new identity as a child of God. Our identities are important. Where we come from, who we belong to, the names we carry, they tell us who we are. They tell us what to do. Sometimes we, we can even wear those identities on our, on our bodies. Do you know, you want to know who I am? You want to know my identity? Here we go. Hey, look, here's part of my identity. I'm a, I'm a Twins fan. Oh, hang on. Oh, look, I'm a Vikings fan. Oh, wait a minute, let's take a look. I am a fan of the St. Paul Saints. Oh, hang on, I got one more. Take a look. I'm a fan of the Royals. And the list goes on to all those things that are a part of my identity. And it's not just sports that's a part of my identity or your identity. What's your favorite TV show that you talk about? Who's your favorite musical group, the favorite band, the kind of music you listen to? Where were you born? 
Where do you live now? It's all part of our identity, and it all helps shape us, and we can talk about it, and it's all actually kind of fun, or it can be, unless you take it too far, and our identities start to be barriers, hard barriers between us, when it can be quite divisive. Are you an urban person, or are you a rural person? Are you a Republican or are you a Democrat? Are you conservative or are you liberal? Are you black or are you white? How about this one? Do you wear a face mask or do you not wear a face mask? See what happens? Can you feel it right now? I'm just naming these. I'm not claiming any of them. I'm just naming them out loud. And you get kind of edgy a little bit, don't you? Yeah. You get kind of edgy because it's not just about what we're doing or something out there. It gets to the core of our beings. It gets to who we are. It gets to our very identity. The thing is, well, all those names and labels in the groups that we identify with all have their place and they're all fine. Our deepest identity has nothing to do with any of that stuff. We have an identity that runs way deeper than our favorite sports teams or music groups or political parties, our deepest identity <clears throat> isn't about any of that. And it's not anything that separates and divides us. Our deepest identity is something that brings us together and unites us. Our deepest identity, the one that we all share, the one that we all have in common, the one that brings us all together, no matter what other differences there are, we are all children of God. Every single one of us. We're all children of God, baptized into new life by God, claimed, loved, and belonging to one big family. When Jesus was baptized, the voice from heaven said, You are a child of God. You belong to God. You are mine, and you are loved. When you were baptized, basically the same words were spoken. You are a child of God. You belong to God, and you are loved. In the end, in the end, there's only one hat we wear, only sign, one sign that we wear. It's this one right here, marked on our foreheads with the sign of the cross <clears throat> when we're baptized into God. Just like this hat that I made <clears throat> yesterday. The sign of the cross is on it. I don't know if you can see it. I made that cross with band-aids that are on there. I thought that was kind of appropriate actually. You know, we're all kind of broken. We're all kind of wounded. We're all in need of healing, which means none of us can claim anything over anybody else. We're not divided at all. We're not pitted against each other no matter what it might look like on the outside. We are united. We're united in Christ, buried with Him in His death, and raised with Him to new life. You, me, all of us together, raised to new life as part of God's family every single day. Amen. May the peace of God that passes all understanding Keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. 
Amen. Jesus lifted us up, and I'm just so glad. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound. Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound. Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound. Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. When I was in trouble, Jesus lifted me. When I was in trouble, Jesus lifted me. When I was in trouble, Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. One last verse in honor of these times. COVID came to town. Jesus lifted me. COVID came to town, but Jesus lifted me. COVID came to town, but Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Let us join together in confessing the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. It's our favorite part of the service, the time to share God's peace, <clears throat> sharing of God's swag, S-W-A-G. We smile, wave, and greet everybody. So if you're with folks there, wherever you are, smile, wave, and greet at them. And if you're here with us, that's great. Smile, wave, and greet all of us here today. Glad to have you all here today. Yep, glad that you're here and you and you there right there in the front. Good to have you all here being a part of our worship today. And don't forget, don't just share God's swag and peace now. Share God's peace later. Somebody is waiting to hear from you with a phone call, a letter, an email, a text. Keep in touch. Keep connected with everybody. Share God's peace now and later on. And thanks for doing that. We're also receiving an offering today. I simply want to say thank you for all the ways you support the ministries here at Trinity Lutheran Church in Watertown, Minnesota. But a special thank you right now for your financial gifts. Thank you for bringing your offerings in here, stopping by here in person uh, in the mornings during the week when the office is open. Thanks for sending your offerings here in the mail. We're glad to get those. And thank you for your online offerings, your online gifts as well. If you're curious about learning how to do any of that, especially the online gifts, simply go to our website, trend.org slash give, and you can learn more about how to do that in ever uh, creative ways. I simply want to say thank you for all the ways you support the ministries here at Trinity Lutheran Church, and thank you for the financial gifts that you share with us. Let us pray. O oh God of living water, you are bringing your kingdom of light and life to all people. As your spirit ushers in this new day, let your justice roll down like a mighty water, and let your righteousness grow like an ever-flowing stream. As we sing your praises all the days of our lives. Amen. Now let us pray together the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, may rivers of living water 
flow out of your heart now and forever in the name of the Creator and the Christ and the Holy Comforter. Amen. We're baptized into Christ's life with the Spirit which shines on us now and forever. So let it shine. Let it shine on me. Let it shine on me. Let the light of your lighthouse shine on me. Let it shine. Oh, let it shine. Let the light of your lighthouse to God. And thank you for joining us. Or to thanks to Jacob and to Robin for being here today. Uh, don't forget specific prayer requests are printed in our bulletin if you'd like to find out who exactly we're praying for uh, these days. And we will see you again on uh, Wednesday night, 7 o'clock for campfire worship. And in the meantime, stay calm, stay connected, and shine on. My Lord has done exactly what he said. Let the light of your lighthouse shine.